Well, the International Study of Unruptured Intracranial Aneurysms is a study of unruptured brain aneurysms that has been ongoing dating back to about 1991. This particular phase of the study provides long-term data regarding the rupture risks of unruptured aneurysms. So in other words, when a patient presents to their physician and happens to have a CT scan or an MRI scan performed in which an unruptured aneurysm is detected, we now have these data that help to tell us and help us to guide our patients regarding what the risk of that aneurysm rupturing would be over a long period of time. Well, uh, how this study differed from data that had been presented previously was regarding uh, the length of the follow-up. In other words, this particular segment of the study looked at patients over nearly 10 years of follow-up. And what we found is that over that long period of time, the risk of a previously unruptured aneurysm rupturing was very dependent on the size and location of the aneurysm. Uh, and getting into that a little bit more detail, a larger aneurysm had a much higher risk of rupture. Aneurysms in the back part of the brain on the basilar artery, the posterior cerebral artery, and in an artery called the posterior communicating artery, those aneurysms were a little bit higher risk as opposed to aneurysms in the front part of the brain on the anterior cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery, or internal carotid artery. Well, I think it is useful to get somewhat of an idea of what the rupture risk would be dependent on site and size. And so, as an example, aneurysms that are very small, less than five to seven millimeters in the front part of the brain, and the anterior circulation have an extremely low rupture rate, less than a half percent per year. Whereas on the other end of the spectrum, aneurysms that are greater than 25 millimeters in size, so this is a very large aneurysm, have a rather striking rupture rate of up to five plus percent per year. And so there is a very much significant difference based on size. And then when you think about aneurysm location as well, an aneurysm on an artery in the back part of the brain might have a two times or three times the likelihood of rupture compared to a similar sized aneurysm on an artery in the front part of the brain. Another thing that we think about when it comes to aneurysm rupture rate is whether the patient has ever had a rupture before from some other aneurysm. That also does influence the rupture rate particularly for very small aneurysms. A different way of thinking about it is if you're seeing a patient who's had a prior hemorrhage in the past from some other brain aneurysm, and if they have another aneurysm that's small and unruptured, that rupture risk is higher than if they would never would have had a prior history of a subarachnoid hemorrhage from some other aneurysm. So that needs to be taken into account when these patients are evaluated. When we detect an aneurysm on brain imaging, and I should say that aneurysms are extremely common, about 2% of the population have a brain aneurysm. So we are increasingly detecting them on CT scans and MRI scans done for reasons completely unrelated to the detection of the brain aneurysm. The question that the patients most commonly have for us is, what is the risk if I leave this alone? What's the risk of it rupturing over time? What the data from this study provides is information that we can provide to the patient regarding what the likelihood of that aneurysm rupturing is over the many years ahead so that they can compare that risk to the risk of treatment and make a very educated decision with our guidance regarding whether that should be left alone or whether something should be done to the aneurysm as far as aggressive treatment. The most common treatments for aneurysms uh, include an aneurysm clipping, which is an actual neurosurgery procedure in which a small section of the skull is removed and the neurosurgeon goes in and puts a tiny metallic clip across the base of the aneurysm, treating it in that way. The other treatment is what's called aneurysm coiling in which a neuroradiologist or a neurosurgeon puts a small plastic catheter, a small tube, into a groin artery, then advances that small catheter all the way up into the brain, all the way up into the aneurysm, and small platinum coils, little tiny coils, are placed in the aneurysm from within, from inside the aneurysm, 
and thereby blocking off the aneurysm by putting in these little tiny coils. Essentially, you're plugging the aneurysm sac with these little tiny coils. So that's the second treatment. And then the third management option, if you will, is to leave it alone, to monitor it over time with repeat CT scan or MRI scan, treat hypertension, that is high blood pressure if it's present, uh, assisting a patient in smoking cessation if they're a cigarette smoker. So those are really the three key treatment options. What we've detected on this study are, or is the fact that the rupture rates for some brain aneurysms, particularly smaller brain aneurysms, those rupture rates are very similar to the risks of treatment. So for smaller aneurysms, it's really somewhat unclear regarding whether we should be treating all of those aggressively or whether some of them or many of them should be left alone. So the next step in the research is to look into those smaller aneurysms in more detail and consider a research study in which some patients are treated and others are left alone so that we can finally get the answer regarding whether these small unruptured aneurysms should be left alone or whether they should be treated. A very important message for our patients who have an unruptured aneurysm, and as discussed, this is extremely common, but an important point for them to understand is that having an aneurysm does not necessarily mean that they have a ticking time bomb in the brain. Sometimes in the in years past or decades into the past, that was the thinking. If you had a brain aneurysm, that it was an extremely serious situation that needed to be treated immediately. It ends up actually that particularly for smaller aneurysms, and whether they be in the front part of the brain or the back part of the brain, the rupture risk is relatively low. And so a patient can very carefully consider what the risk of a rupture might be and what the risk of treatment might be and then make that decision because certainly not all small aneurysms need to be treated. Many of them can be left alone and then assessed on an intermittent basis with repeat CT scan or MRI scanning and then over the course of time decide if anything further needs to be done.